asking to talk, though it was a bit short notice, so I struggled to prepare the talk and uh, we'll take a bunch of shortcuts. Namely, uh, first of all, I'm uh, skipping most of the references. I'm just going to say that the subject of the word of fertility production is pretty old. A lot of people uh, contributed since, since the 90s, uh, such as in the 90s there were works by Newcastle with the collaborators. Uh, such as with lots of modern shadows, really. Tudor also worked on the subject at some point. The, uh, there will be some um, ideas from works of Okunkovan collaborators and also a tiny bit of ideas from my ongoing work with Picasso. So uh, let's start. Uh, and another shortcut that I will take is that um, there will be no minimal type of technical details, so it's just sort of a uh, overview. So, um, just like in Justin's talk, uh, things really start in two dimensions. Uh, so, part zero. In, in one considers the A model, or uh, you have an A twisted uh, two dimensional 2,2 gauge theory. Um, on, uh, on the plane, or I will present this plane as a scar. Uh, with uh, optionally with omega deformation, so omega background yeah, that corresponds to rotations of the cigar. And uh, in this case, as was reviewed in many talks, the, B the BPS equations uh, include the bosonic part is basically the vortex equations. So the matter fields are uh, holomorphic sections and uh, the moment map equations um, where here zeta is the five parameters, they are satisfied up to the contribution of the gauge field strength. And uh, I, I should also put the, the parameter, which is the gauge coupling in the, in the two dimensional theory. And as we go, as one goes to uh, close to well, in physics, we call flow to IR. One can, one sense these par these parameters go to infinity. So, in particular, if you take E to infinity, this becomes uh, quasi maps. Namely, uh, the the typical solutions of these equations, the vortices, they are they they have the size order so. So the core of the vortex is of, uh, the size of order one over e, and as you send e to infinity, these solutions shrink to points, and what you get is uh, solutions that are almost they are homomorphic almost everywhere except a um, um, collection of points. So the solutions just look like uh, really homomorphic maps from this cigar into your. Uh, target space X, which is uh, obtained by the, for example, uh, well, here is just a Keller reduction, or in case of uh, twice, many, twice as many supersymmetry would be a JIT quotient. So you just have holomorphic maps, which fail to be regular at uh, some collection of points. And, uh, well, that's without omega background, and if you have omega background, then, um, then all these vortices there uh, sitting at the uh, at the tip of this cigar, and uh, um, well, if X, uh, let's say, is our a um, target, so stable, then um, normally people say that. Uh, um, and C is some curve, and we say that this is a um, stable quasi map.
if, if uh, well, first of all, it's a, it's a map into this quotient stack such that um, really it takes values in where, where, where this is, it is open, right? So the open subset here. And f of x takes values in this open, except uh, for finite for many points. Then one may consider the modular space of such class maps into um, into X, which are quasi maps. Uh, you you think uh, so? What you change? Okay. Um, I guess I should say that uh, one can think of uh, F as a homomorphic section of some bundle on your um, uh, curve in case of uh, theories with actually four comma four supersymmetry that are related to Nakajima queer varieties, uh, the bundle will be something like this. Where M um, is uh, is determined by the quiver underlying this uh, quiver theory. So here the i are uh, sort of gauge bundles, and then there's some multiplicity, and there's also bundles corresponding to matter. that rotates the M star. So um, and when one considers the uh, space of plasma, uh, you think of varying the data of these bundles V and the data of a section, while um, W, H bar, they, they're fixed. So these are framing, framing uh, vector spaces. And then, well, um, physically, this vortex partition function in two dimensions is just the uh, partition function of this eight-twisted theory for, uh, on this background. But, uh, and then mathematically, it's a certain push forward of a, uh, um, of an equivariant homomorphism class on the model of space, push forward with respect to the evaluation map. Now, I, I will um, give slightly more details. Um, now, this is uh, the two-dimensional case. Uh, my main interest in the three-dimensional lift of this. But okay, before that, I should also mention that just in, in two dimensions, this quantity plays a role in various localization computations, uh, and it's basically the analog of Necrasov's partition function for instantons, but in, in the case of two-dimensional theories, uh, say so you have uh, uh, two, uh, so two D two comma two theory on on the sphere um, without any topological twist, so it's like uh, conformal background. I'm not going to give details on that, but uh, there exist various. Um, localization computation schemes uh, to evaluate the partition function, and there is something known as the Higgs branch localization, in which case the answer gets expressed as a sum of a possible vortices in the on the, at the North Pole and anti vortices at the South Pole. And the contributions are computed using this um, vortex partition function as an ingredient. Um, uh, 
Now, the, it of course also appears in uh, Given Tal's theory, but I'm not going to talk about that. No. In three dimensions, um, we are interested in uh, uh, putting our theory on the following space. So that's one across a plane or a disk. And uh, I'll put little q here, which means that you actually give it a, a particular metric where um, as you go around the circle, you rotate disk. So that's really the 3D lift of the omega background. And uh, in this case, uh, and, and there is a, so here I'm talking about 3D n equals 2 theory. Uh, such theories don't have the fully topological twist. So like Justin was talking about n equals 4 theories, which have A and B fully topological twist. Here, there's none, but uh, there exists something called uh, 3D A twist, which is like topological along the, these D2 directions. And um, well, also imposes certain boundary conditions. Um, say at the boundary of this disk, let me call them, so there is like some the alpha boundary conditions. They are, uh, well, labeled by uh, isolated vacua of, of the theory. And, and this quantity has many names, so, uh, uh, so block, uh, or just k theoretic vertex partition function. Also vertex, vertex function. Uh, in works of um, collaborators. In that case, uh, one can um, find it actually in the following way. So one picks the non-singular. So quasi, and one picks the open subset in the space of in this in this uh, modular space of quasi maps, which are so. Um, I can think of this, uh, again, this disk either as a uh, cigar, and then there's infinity. <laughs> or I can think of it as a, um, just a P1, and here I pick a point, so let's call it infinity, and then one can consider quasi-maps that are a non-singular at uh, this point infinity. They are some form of open set. And uh, um, there's an evaluation map, which is evaluation at this point infinity. And then uh, this thing in the normalization, when it's called the vertex function, it's defined as the push forward with respect to this evaluation map of a, um, so um, you take on this, uh, on this space of non-singular quasi-maps, it's non-singular at infinity, you take a certain uh, um, virtual structure sheet, slightly modified, but uh, you also introduce the the parameter z that counts degree of your quasi-maps. Yeah. And then you take this push forward and this lands you into, um, well, k-theory, well, um, covariant k-theory of, of your x. Also, uh, with this additional um, well, okay, it's localized, meaning that you allow to take uh, rational functions of equivariant parameters, and then there are also this parameter, additional parameters that counts the degree of uh, um, uh, quasi-maps. Now, um, but physically, If you start instead of a circle, start uh, with your th uh, start with your theory on uh, R, which is sort of as time cross 
D2 with a, a twist, then again, VPS equations include just vortex equations along these uh, two directions. So vortex equations here. This is VPS equations. So, so just uh, equations that tell you that they preserve the supersymmetries. Uh, preserved, uh, the supercharge corresponding to this 3DA twist. Um, and then um, these states, are, they are just uh, solitons, so it's like particles. So particles, in other words, particles. Uh, and uh, they are invariant with respect to translations here. So the solution is, is really like the world line of this particle. And then once you close it to a, uh, to a circle, you um, get this quantity. Uh, so, so really partition function on this uh, S1 for us. Uh, with a... Uh, Choice boundary conditions. Uh, it's the index that so vortex counting index. It uh, um, again it appears in um, various applications and in particular when one when one do localization computation using the Higgs branch localization scheme. Um, so. on S, S2 cross S1 uh, so it's just a dimensional uplift of whatever we have here again the, what one finds is that in the Higgs branch localization there are contributions from vortices in the north pole and anti-vortices in the south pole and one can also consider close, uh, close the related quantity, again, the Higgs branch localization scheme, but uh, instead you have a hemisphere cross S1. Oh, uh, similar object also exists here in two dimensions, I just didn't mention it. Um, and again, uh, here I'm talking about actually a sphere or a hemisphere without any topological twist. So this first thing is known as a Superconformal so index. And the second one is a half index. And again, there are contributions from vortices. Um, Uh, with certain boundary conditions here. Now, if you compute the half index for the boundary condition B alpha as a function of some, some parameters x, which uh, represent uh, global symmetries of your theory, so we, and the uh, flavor symmetries, if you remember again from Justin Saki, introduced the notion of flavor symmetries, and so here they are really, uh, well, certain masses for flavor symmetries and also flat connection along S1. And uh, there are also the vortex counting parameter, which is um, sometimes in physics called the, the, the corresponding symmetry, called the topological symmetry, or, or they, they correspond to central characters of the gauge group. Again, something that appeared in Justin so. Um, then the answer in this case takes the form, basically you have some of the possible vortices and then there are some classical contribution times uh, some one loop contributions uh, and this vortex partition function of corresponding vortex charge. So um, the point I wanted to make here is that 
knowledge of this uh, quantity is basically almost completely equivalent to the knowledge of vortex partition function. So for the rest of the talk, instead of vortex partition function, I'll be focusing on the half index. Um, and we'll really discuss the three roles of this half index. Um, also, uh, more uh, dry chalk because this. This is dry. This oh, is dry. Uh, uh, so, what is the third index there? Z to gamma? Mm -hmm. The third. This is the first, second. So, yeah. Oh, the vortex partition function. Okay. So, uh, like when you look at the computation like this, in the, uh, using this, you get like a classical action evaluated <coughs> at the fixed points. Uh, I mean, on the localization block, because there's some one loop determinant for the fields fluctuating away from the pole, and then there's a contribution from vortices. This is the third one. So here's this object, half index, and uh, there will be its uh, three applications. Now, physically, uh, such index it really counts uh, local operators at the boundary. B alpha. So one should think about it as a, you have a half space. This is a boundary with a boundary condition B alpha. And then you count local operators. And then it's like such local operator, there's an operator state map. Uh, and local operator corresponds to a state <coughs> on the hemisphere. So it's like a known as radial quantization. In, physics, and then um, this is how you get this hemisphere. The radial direction is time, which you then replace by a circle, and that corresponds, one can show that that corresponds to counting uh, local operators at the boundary. And in fact, um, Counting uh, local operators in, in, in the cohomology of a supercharge, a certain supercharge, um, Q plus bar closed local operator. And this, um, in this application, it is so well, here the relevant words is the holomorphic topological twist and, and uh, the, the there is a, um, these local operators in the q bar plus cohomology, they actually form a vertex algebra. So there is a, uh, let me say, like this, just denoted as h of q bar plus, the cohomology of local operators at the boundary, they form a vertex operator algebra, v of a, I can denote it via way of B alpha because it corresponds to a boundary condition. Uh, so this is this first application um, that uh, the half index is actually it's a it's a character of uh, of a vacuum module of uh, V O A of B alpha. Now this is actually the, precisely the application that I'm not going to talk about in the rest of the talk. Yeah. 
Um, now, um, okay. Uh, before I move further, uh, let me also give a few details on this. Um, maybe just say a few words about this. Uh, as I said, non-conformal or not 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 twisted background. So there's no topological twist along the hemisphere. The the way how you put a 3D n equals two theory on uh, some three manifold, it's it's well understood and uh, classified in the literature, and it, it's known that it is determined by a THF, so transversal homomorphic foliation, and. Uh, so one literally has some uh, one dimensional foliation on, on your three manifold and the complex structure in the transversal directions. Um, and I can just to write some formulas, I can even, um, even though I said there will be no technical details, I can give you an explicitly what's the THF for, for such background. So uh, first of all, the, here I'm, well, let's say that Uh, let's um, denote the coordinate on this S1 as an angle alpha, and, uh, and on the hemisphere there will be the usual spherical coordinates theta and phi, and then one can introduce the, the uh, vector field. Which is... Uh, uh, well, for the round sphere, it's just going to be sin sine theta d theta plus cosine theta d alpha minus epsilon d phi. Here, this epsilon is uh, the parameter. Uh, basically, it tells you that uh, when you go around S1, you rotate the hemisphere by an angle. Uh, epsilon, or maybe two pi epsilon. Um, and then there also exists a complex structure, uh, let me call it phi, on the transversal directions such that uh, phi squared is a. Uh, e I actually, let me skip this. Sorry. Um, um, so there is a certain discussion of this background that I'm, I'm skipping, and just uh, going to tell you that uh, you can deform this background in such a way that uh, that you replace the uh, round hemisphere by again. A, very long cigar, cross S1, and in this description uh, here, it's gonna uh, close to the tip. It's gonna look like a 3D A twist. If you just, if you, if it were just some some observer living in this part of space, then they would experience this as a 3D. N equals to a twisted theory, whereas here, um, uh, well, you can say it, it's like, it looks like a 3D, well, a th 3D B twist or the homomorphic topological twist. And the corresponding uh, boundary condition, you can impose boundary condition here, which, it, which I call B alpha here. They become like a um, 3D N equals to analog of B brains, which are really also known in the physics literature as 0, 0,2 boundary conditions. Now, The 
the value of this function um, of the hemisphere times the circle um, it depends on many parameters of the theory and in particular it uh, can jump as you go between different phases of the theory and here by phases I mean the same like water ice in that sense of phases. So, uh, in particular, the two phases that I'm going to focus on are called the Higgs phase and the Coulomb phase. In the Higgs phase, the theory at low energies is described as a sigma model into the Higgs branch. In the Coulomb phase, is a sigma model into the Coulomb branch, um, roughly speaking. And uh, even though I've been talking about 3D n equals 2 theories until now, uh, now I will secretly be thinking about uh, 3D n equals 4 theories. Um, but uh, thought of as n equals two theories. So again, there will, no, there will be no topological twists happening. So before, can I, so this background that you put, where one end is the a twist, the other end is b twist, does it preserve the supersymmetry you need to, yes. to write down these, uh, both the super conform index and the half index? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's precisely that background. It's just, this structure becomes more manifest when you ex elongate the, Hemisphere. So is the claim is that there exists a deformation that preserves supersymmetry. Okay. Um, um, so the parameters that determine the phase in this case will be the real masses. And uh, uh, and uh, real uh, five parameters, or also known as stability parameters, and I put zeta. And um, th this this quantity, the partition function on such background, depends on, on these parameters in a piecewise constant way, but it, it can jump at certain walls. Now the the space of real masses in there's a, a certain hyperplane arrangement there. It, it's, so some walls that are subdivided into chambers. And, uh, um, well, and in general, the answer might undergo some transformation so you go, as you go between chambers, and the same uh, for five parameters. And um, in particular, the values that correspond to Higgs and Coulomb phases are as follows. So the Higgs phase is when you have zero masses and, uh, and generic five parameters inside some chamber. Let me call it uh, C within the C, which means that the, or maybe within its data. So it's a ch chamber, some chamber, let's say this one in the parameters, in the five parameters. And on the Coulomb phase is when instead the masses are in some chamber, the generic values in some inside the chamber. Here, whereas uh, the five parameters are zero. And um, the, let me denote the corresponding um, Partition functions in these two cases as uh, V alpha and V tilde alpha. So this is a partition function on the hemisphere across this one. They are certain non-trivial functions of uh, parameters that are denoted x. Actually, let me, oh, never mind. 
Yes. Uh -huh. X or Z, and the same here, X plus Z. And uh, recall that under 3D mirror symmetry, the Higgs and Coulomb branches are, are swapped. And um, in fact, the corresponding parameters are also swapped. So one can say that this V tilde of x comma z, or, OK, let me actually break this x into two in things. So there is this one parameter h bar. I'm not I don't have time to explain but it I'll just say that it breaks n equals four down to n equals two. <laughs> Excuse me. And then A is the rest of uh, flavored symmetry parameters. Th these are really n equals the A correspond to n equals four flavor symmetries. So these parameters don't break n equals 4 supersymmetry. So then this um, um, quantity for your theory, let's say for, for theory t, Uh, corresponds to uh, V with A uh, with Z and A swapped, but for for the mirror theory, well, let me call it just V check. Uh, so, so the Coulomb branch answer of your original theory and the Higgs branch answer of the mirror symmetry mirror theory. Uh, with the Z and A swap, they are equal to each other. But uh, what if you try to compare, say, V and V tilde in the same theory, or uh, the Higgs branch V and the Higgs branch V of the dual theory, um, then it turns out that they are related in a non-trivial way, uh, namely, There is a, a certain matrix where the sun goes over this uh, massive vacuum with a uh, P, let me call it P, alpha and beta. Um, uh, okay, depending on all these parameters, um, times V beta but with Z and A swap. Um, so this function that appears here, uh, it is called uh, by open Hogan collaborators the whole subtraction matrix. And it actually is built from both from elliptic stable envelopes. So, uh, physically, one can think about it as follows. 
Um, imagine that uh, we have our theory here in the Higgs phase. So it means that mass is zero and uh, a phi parameter is generic. And then we can uh, introduce an interface where, which changes the value of mass so such that now here the mass is generic and changes the phi parameter such that now it's zero on this side. So in other words, here a theory is in the Coulomb phase. And this interface, let me call it J, it's, it's uh, um, such sort of interfaces in physics are often called Janus interface, meaning that you change the parameters of your theory in a certain way. And it, it interplays between the two phases. And um, that sort of explains this, well, okay, it doesn't, well, there's a certain story to be told there for which I clearly have no time. Uh, but this uh, matrix is basically the partition function of this interface, if you put it like on the interval with various boundary conditions. Uh, now, it's um, an important, uh, or maybe it's an interesting interpretation of this is that uh, the, this partition function on the cigar um, can be interpreted as the elliptic homology class either for the Higgs branch or for the Coulomb branch. picture cross S1. And notice that when you look at it asymptotically, all you have here is just a torus. So you can think of a partition function on this geometry as actually a, according to the, uh, the axioms, uh, the Siegel style axioms that uh, Justin mentioned in his, in his lectures, this is going to give you a vector in the Hilbert space associated to this asymptotic boundary S1 cross S1. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as uh, when you evaluate it with certain boundary conditions, B alpha, um, so it means that you simply uh, decompose this factor in the basis of uh, supersymmetric ground states. Um, now, the, the, this partition function on, on this geometry, it actually, uh, um, well, let me call, let me denote collectively all these parameters with capital X. It depends on them almost holomorphically by more precisely the anti-homomorphic dependence is um, captured by, well, the boundary anomalies, which is something that's uh, known and well computable in physics, and that basically captures the fact that this thing is not a function, but a section of a certain bundle. Um, there are some integer coefficients here. Uh, let me and these coefficients depend on alpha. 
And this section of the bundle, um, depending on parameters x, uh, you actually get uh, sections and, uh, wait, let's say if we have n vacuum, you get n such sections, and together, Sorry, what is this tau or t that you wrote there? Oh, yeah, tau is it's like a, it's like a, a, a complex structure. On this torus, that's why I press this one. Um, so what it tells you is that v, this v alpha for alpha are holomorphic sections. Of certain bundles L alpha over the space of b b such parameters x. So they are valid in a certain space E, which is basically just the Jacobian of your torus, which is a torus again, to a certain power. And, uh, and uh, together, these bundles, they can be glued to a certain, a section of a certain bundle of, over the elliptic, equivalent elliptic homology, which is a scheme of your uh, either Higgs branch or Coulomb branch, depending on which phase you're in. Um, so uh, since I'm almost, yeah, I'm out of time, what I'm gonna do is that, I will fill this second row, which is actually um, that this partition function, it gives you class and elliptic homology of either Higgs or Coulomb branch, which corresponds to counting vortices on these uh, spaces. And, uh, and it behaves in a certain non-trivial way under uh, mirror symmetry or under symplectic duality if you compare Higgs and Coulomb branches in the same theory. Um, uh, so in this sense, I will say that it probes um, symplectic duality between Higgs and Coulomb branches. And the third rule, which I have no time to talk about, is uh, that there is this subject of Bathy gauge correspondence, where one, for, for a family of quantum field theories, one, uh, that, that, that corresponds a quantum integrable system in the sense of algebraic <coughs> So it really is just a representation of certain uh, uh, algebra like a Yangian. And uh, so in, in Bethe gauge correspondence, one has that uh, on the one hand, one considers supersymmetric vacua of a, a family of quantum field theories. Of supersymmetric quantum field theories. So that's on the one hand. And these vacua, they actually are equal to the Hilbert space Of, uh, of quantum integral model. And uh, here, the notice how I said that the vortex partition function, uh, I mean, this uh, half index, 
it actually provides you, it generates a state in the Hilbert space on the torus, which can be decomposed. It's really a linear combination of ground states. So what one can do is that consider such uh, partition functions with additional insertion here. So this purple dot really, it, since it wraps the S1, it, it's a line operator, which uh, is labeled by some k-theory class of uh, a covariant k-theory class of, uh, of your either Higgs or Coulomb branch. And uh, using all such possible insertions, one can generate uh, all supersymmetric ground states. And uh, there is a way there are some very special insertions <clears throat> that uh, produce you uh, something called this Bethe eigenstate. So, so the third row is really, uh, I can say it's a, well, row in Bethe gauge correspondence. Uh, so, yeah, so these are the three roles. I didn't have time to talk about the first one where it's a character of vertex algebra. I ran out of time, I ran out of time, so couldn't really talk about the third one either, where it uh, produces uh, Bethe eigenstates in the, in the Bethe gauge correspondence. And the, in the middle, we have the, this quantity probes. Like, I guess I, I should say that here it's really uh, counts vortices. <laughs> into uh, um, quasi-maps into the Higgs or Coulomb branch and probes the symplectic duality between, between the two. And in this sense, it sort of lies at the, at the intersection of uh, several different research programs. Um, and uh, I will start here. Okay, let's thank uh, Nicola. Anybody got a question? Just quickly, maybe. Uh, so how about when you when you have a complex human surface times something, like, for example, the setup that uh, Andrea, Andrea was describing in his talk? Uh, is is this picture completely different, or how? Uh, so um, that's an excellent question because I was just discussing this with various people earlier uh, this week. And uh, there must be a generalization of this picture. So first of all, in that case, the natural choice is the holomorphic topological twist that mm, computers are working on. And uh, then there are a notion, those are corresponding field spaces that uh, Andrea has worked out in his papers. And um, uh, if you can, fo you can focus on the ground states, and it's, it gives you some higher genus sort of generalization of elliptical homology, except um, there is no formal group law because it's a higher genus surface, so it's like some uh, uh, less rich notion of cohomology. Uh, uh, as Justin explained to me earlier it's this week, it's, it's unoriented. Or like it's an unoriented homology theory. Really. No turn so, classes. No so, but presumably so, there is some interesting story there, most likely. Okay, so let's thank Nicole again. <laughs> and, uh, let us know